These uplights are rated IP67. That means they should be watertight. So why do so many installers and homeowners still find them full of water? Picture this, you've planned the job carefully. Everything's neat, the expensive paving's been laid, and then the phone rings. The customer's telling you there's condensation on the glass. Suddenly you're facing a callback, ripping up paving, and an awkward conversation about faulty lights. Most people assume an IP67 rating means a fitting is completely waterproof, end of story. That's what customers think too. But here's the reality. The IP test is carried out in a lab under very specific conditions. It doesn't reflect what happens when that same fitting is buried in the soil, surrounded by rainwater, exposed to frost at night, and baked by the sun during the day. Here's a selection of examples we've seen from across the world. It's a universal problem. Condensation is the most common one, and left unchecked, it can actually create a mini greenhouse inside the fitting. In one case, we found a plant had literally taken root and started growing inside the uplight. Sometimes the issue comes down to poor installation or lack of maintenance, which can let water sit around the fitting and cause no end of problems. And then there are the more creative cases like in Dubai, where an electrician decided to spur off from an in-ground light to power a set of fairy lights in a palm tree above. Have you come across something similar? Condensation, water damage, or a truly unusual uplight installation? Share your stories in the comments. We'd love to hear the examples you've seen. Even if you've followed the instructions to the letter, you can still end up with a problem. And sometimes the issue isn't the fitting itself at all. It's the cable that's been used to connect it. And this can happen with any type of cable, unless that is the uplight is fitted with something like this, which we can see on the Robus Kingler in-ground. We'll explain exactly how this feature works later in the video. But first, let's understand how the cable can allow moisture to find its way into the fitting. Let's take a look at a typical cable used to connect outdoor lighting, a common one being HO7RNF. To make a cable flexible and easy to strip, the inner cores mustn't stick to the outer sheath. That's why manufacturers add French chalk during the production process. The downside is that this leaves a tiny gap, especially in the middle where the cores meet, and that gap offers a pathway for moisture to move along the cable, and it's all helped by physics. Here's a demonstration. In this fitting, I've sealed up the cable entry and connected a pipe to a manometer, which measures the pressure difference between the inside and the outside of the housing. When I apply a heat gun to warm up the fitting, you can see the pressure inside begins to rise as the air expands. In a real installation with a cable connected, that expanding air is forced out through the tiny gaps in the cable. This is exactly what happens during the day when sunlight warms the fixture. At night, the opposite happens. The temperature drops, the air inside contracts, and the falling pressure pulls air back in through the cable. If that cable is terminated in a poorly sealed external junction box, the incoming air can also carry water vapor. Over time, that vapor accumulates inside the fitting and condenses on the glass. It might only be a tiny amount each day, but left unchecked, it builds up. Here's the proof. This fitting was left on the bench for a few weeks with the cable end sitting in a water-filled junction box, and you can see the condensation that's formed inside. And I can further demonstrate that by trying to drink this beer through this small length of cable. So if I put in my uh, straw, it's not easy, but I am actually getting some beer through now. Can I blow some bubbles back in? Yes, I can, but it's, I find it easier to just drink it in reverse. Cheers. How do the design features on this Robus Kingler in-ground prevent water ingress into the fixture? Well, the first one is you don't actually have to open up the fixture to install it. That's sealed when it leaves the factory. You only have to worry about terminating the cable. And the cable itself has this over-molded section here, which interrupts the flow of water potentially going through that cable by sealing the gaps in between the cable. A little bit like the similar approach you'd get if you were to use a gel-filled junction box. Really, you've got two choices. Either specify a fitting like this one, which has been designed to take into account what actually happens in the real world, or pay very careful attention to your cable joints, perhaps selecting those with a gel filling to perform the same function as the over-molded section on the Robus Kinglet fixture. The downside is that these joints can be quite expensive, especially across a large installation. Now, you know why an IP67 rating doesn't guarantee your uplights will stay dry, but that's only half the story. If you'd rather skip in-ground fittings altogether, my colleague Joe Hammond has some clever alternatives. Click the video on screen now to see how you can light a garden in completely different ways using other innovative fixtures from Robus. And while you're there, let me know in the comments if you've ever opened up a fitting and found condensation, water damage, or something even stranger inside.